<laughs> it's like it's nice to sound like this smiling <laughs> yeah great great, great yeah great. all right um yeah. hello hello Christina. yeah hello isran <laughs> yeah um, hi um well um can we start uh by uh by you telling us where are we this is a sacral site or pilgrimage site called skalka close to small town in central Bohemia, Nisek Podbrdy. And um, I like a lot this site. It's in beautiful nature. There is a small church, a small uh, old monastery. And um, in fact, actually, this uh, site is also related to Mehana. <laughs> uh, how yeah. is it? Yeah, uh, because we uh, our very first uh, workshops uh, uh, we organized for public. Um, they happened here. That was in summer 2022. The fact that uh, I like to stay here um, to contemplate, so maybe also the idea about Mahana came into my mind here. And then um, I was very happy that uh, the municipality they supported me with the very first uh, seminar. So uh, we organized them in the former monastery. All right, so then to have the image, uh, where we are, the town is Minishek uh, Podbert. Yes, <laughs> exactly. But, but this hill where we are... Uh, it's is called Skalka. 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 Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is a great view from here, I can say. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and can you tell me, uh, to continue a little bit about your professional background? Yes, I am a medical doctor. I am specialized in emergency medicine and anesthesiology and intensive care. So most, mostly I practiced for 23 years emergency medicine. And uh, I got also specialized in mountain medicine and mountain rescue. So I work with the helicopter rescue um, services in France uh, and in the Czech Republic. And I also practice in the Swiss Alps. And um, as for my passion for like the emergency medicine, uh, I participated in three humanitarian missions in, in the war zones. So always I participated in the um, trauma care projects, both in uh, Afghanistan, Kurdistan, and Yemen. Yeah, that um, I think that's uh, some very 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 important and interesting information. Actually, I found uh, you write uh, one or two books, right? Uh, it, it, this was uh, these books uh, are um, were written during the time you was. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm, yeah. These books are based upon my like daily experiences. So one book is called Doctor Between Sky and the Mountains, and the other book is called. So this first one relates to my experiences from the Alpine helicopter rescue. And the other one um, is called Doctor Between Desert and Mines. And it's related uh, to my experiences from the war missions. And uh, yes, the, both books are based upon my daily uh, observations or emails. And uh, then they are completed by some reflections um, concerning uh, the topics. Yeah, yeah. Right, and Mehana <laughs> started in 2022. Yeah, yeah, Mehana Institute, yes, my idea. Uh, yeah, this project um, came into my mind at the beginning of, of 2022. Right, yeah. okay, it, it started in your mind at the beginning of 2022 and it materialized at in what moment? In mm -hmm. So Mehana means, uh, so this name Mehana is composed from three words, Medicina in Harmonia Cum Natura, yeah, like Latin words. It means medicine in harmony with nature. And uh, so the name came to my mind when I was in Rome at the beginning of 2022. But just after that, the war in Ukraine started. So... Suddenly, I was sure where, is, uh, where was my place that time. So I left with uh, Doctors Without Borders uh, for Ukraine. And I stopped uh, to think about Mehana. 
and you know at the very beginning nobody was sure what the war will mean also for us and um, so I forgot uh, completely to, to think about my Mehana project but uh, when my mission was over it was in April 22 so I got back to the Czech Republic and then it is where I started to implement my ideas. Um, my next question will be about um, you previously mentioned about this um, main uh, currents of uh, medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's three three currents, right? Like the Western medicine we know mm -hmm. uh, that it comes from, I think, uh, Greek Greek uh, mm -hmm. uh, Greek culture. Uh, yes. And there is the Chinese medicine, mm -hmm. traditional medicine, mm -hmm. and there is the Ayurvedic medicine, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Please uh, tell us how, how this uh, mm -hmm. how this 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 concept this medicine uh, this concept come together in, in, in so first of all I would like to um, tell so what is Mehana about Mehana is an institute uh, for complementary and integrative health and complementary health is defined as non pharmacological and non invasive medical approaches which are not uh, conventionally used within uh, the Western medicine, uh, but their benefit for health is uh, proven by evidence-based uh, medical studies. And what is interesting, so we can consider the traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine, and also like the Western medicine, like the Hippocratic Galenic medicine, we can uh, consider as uh, the maybe most important medicinal uh, pillars. Um, all of them, they um, arise uh, approximately in the same time, like around 2,000 to 3,000 years ago. Um, and uh, what is interesting is that that time when they arise, uh, they couldn't really communicate among each other. And now we have this opportunity to um, learn about the other medicinal traditions. And so now we see that they have so much in common and they have such an importance in their our cultures. And we, what we like to do within Mehana, we like really to see what the different uh, medicinal tradition they have in common. And mostly we focus on non-invasive and non-pharmacological medi medical approaches. Right. Yeah. And you will say this is uh, complementary uh, mm -hmm. to... To Western, to conventional medicine. Right. Yes. We don't... Uh, so this approach not contradict at all the uh, conventional medicine. But however, it's an interesting complementary tool which um, emphasizes mostly the prevention of uh, disease and uh, suspension of good health. Yeah, I think that's very important. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, I read uh, in your blog, and I think before I, I had some some knowledge about how um, incredibly the smile, mm -hmm. the movement of a uh, smile, like mm -hmm. smile, the expression for smiling, and and some movements of the body are are um, um, related to uh, well, of course, how the brain works, mm -hmm. but also to um, to express this in our health. Mm -hmm. So, could you mm -hmm. a little bit explain? Yes, it's quite an interesting issue. So, just uh, try um, to imagine that you have uh, a lot of negative thoughts. You are depressed. You are in bad mood, and so you. Uh, have this rumor in your head that uh, everybody is uh, bad and you should trust the people and the world is uh, the hell, etc. Like open your chest and smile, really lift uh, your mouth corners and uh, you look up, open the chest like this and suddenly you will see that this rumor stops. It's incompatible. You can't uh, keep on thinking uh, all these uh, negative thoughts. And at the other hand, uh, try to do another experiment, just jump and do these joyful postures and try to switch on these uh, negative uh, uh, thoughts. It's also incompatible. So 
it is an example how uh, our thoughts uh, lead to certain state of mind and mood and how this reflects also in the physical postures which uh, create negative moods and uh, so probably your posture will be for a long time something like this and this is not healthy if you stay for weeks in this kind of, of uh, alignment then your lung alveoli are not good perfused not well oxygenated also your circulation in coronary vessels can um, be compromised so you are more prone to develop some lung infections because uh, you know everything is stuck here so your inner organs are compressed and so you compress also the lymphatic drainage it means that also some toxins can um, be stuck in your belly and so you can suffer of digestive problems also your neck can be really blocked here so uh, this is why we emphasize uh, the body alignment and the movement and bring awareness into the movement patterns because even though you know that it is not healthy to have the negative thoughts sometimes you can't stop it it's hard but you can help it from the other part of the chain you know you can help it by readjusting the posture although you are on bad mood but when you do kind of movements which open your chest which are related to positive state of mind it will disturb this um, uh, negative rumor and it, it will also improve your mood so that's why for example dance have a look dance makes part of different uh, cultures hold the world around and uh, why originally it was also for the uh, healing purpose that uh, you know when you dance when you sing when you smile then uh, the worries uh, are gone <laughs> that's funny yeah. we, we have a dance called uh, uh, mm. old old uh, men dance yeah it's, uh, people dancing like they are uh, old, older mm -hmm. you know with masks like also old uh, person mm -hmm. and uh, they they move like this but then as the dance advance and mm -hmm. performance also it it opens the body uh, mm -hmm. of the of the performer mm -hmm. interesting and and related also uh, there is um uh, breathing exercises in the mm -hmm. in the techniques uh, at Mihana, right Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned these are um, very essential in the um, so, uh, very important in the mm -hmm. contemplative and the movement uh, uh, mm -hmm. techniques yes breathing exercises uh, it's interesting to observe that they make up part of our eastern medicinal traditions so they make up important part of the therapeutic approach and so we implement them also in, in our workshops and why so the effect or the health benefit of uh, breathing techniques is uh, very very uh, complex and there are many aspects so i will mention just some of them so first of all uh, you know usually you you breathe automatically so you are not ever off once you bring your awareness so you control your breathing so so you really concentrate and you control how you breathe it is the moment when you bring your awareness into the subconscious behaviors and subcortical structures of the brain and it is uh, so this is why breathing techniques they mm, make part also of the contemplative techniques so why it is important because 95% uh, of our consciousness is in subconscious area. It does mean there are the things like the emotions which really happen and we are some mostly not aware of or we don't control. Or another example, breathing is automatic. Or like my posture in the space, like proprioception. So it's all in uh, subconsciousness. But we uh, agree that this is exactly in this subcortical or subconscious area of the brain where also some pathological mechanisms can develop 
for example, when I'm always like on the bad mood, always angry, when I persist in the angry state, then I can have uh, digestive problems. And I am not able to control it anymore because it happens like automatically. So when I want to stop this, and when I want also to let the self-healing mechanism of the body to uh, occur, I have to uh, bring my awareness into the subconscious uh, behavior, subconscious patterns. And this is breathing. So when I control the breathing, I control it. Suddenly, it's if, uh, uh, this is as if I put light in some dark room and I clean it up. Uh, another thing, so uh, there is another part of the uh, um, movement techniques that we concentrate on the balance, body posture in the space. So we watch, okay, where is my hand? Here, here. So this is also, these are the techniques how I can bring my awareness into the subcortical structure of the brain where the self-healing mechanism of the body occurs. And uh, you ask about the other aspects of breathing techniques. Just imagine that... Well, actually, yeah. this, this is part of what I asked. Yes, this is yeah. The, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I see the importance. Okay. For example, when you breathe uh, deeply and you use the diaphragma like this, and you feel that you breathe into your belly. So just place your hands here. So what happens? So already now you do quite a nice drainage or lymphatic drainage of the inner organs, uh, which um, encourages the blood circulation, perfusion and oxygenation of the inner organs. Another effect is on your stabilization system of your vertebrae. So it's another. Another one is uh, when you really uh, learn to breathe properly, you open your chest and also the peripheric alveoli of the lungs, they get perfused and oxygenated. So you get more oxygen. Uh, the same for the coronary blood vessels. And there is another interesting thing which is related also to breathing techniques. This is uh, the vegetative and neurologic system. This is the regulatory part of our neurologic system composed from parasympathetic and sympathetic part. So parasympathetic vegetative system is responsible for states of relaxedness and recovery, whether the sympathetic one is from action, stress. We need both. But when we remain too long in the state of stress, then we got, uh, it can cause many pathologies. So that's why we like also to switch or to train ourselves to switch into the state of relaxation. And this is also what breathing can help us a lot to do because of the vagus nerve. So this is uh, one nerve which makes part of the vegetative uh, vagal or vagus, nervous vagus, nervous vagus. And um, throughout the breathing exercises, we stimulate this nerve, and this nerve brings us into the state of relaxedness. Uh, spelling simply, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Christina, thank you. Uh, <laughs> to continue with uh, complementary healing uh, mm -hmm. methods, I read um, in, in Mehana blog mm -hmm. about uh, Shinrin Joku or mm -hmm. forest medicine. Uh, I, I read it was. Uh, started in Japan not so long mm -hmm. ago, it's very recent, but um, um, how, um, could you explain a little bit and what are the benefits of this uh, mm -hmm. forest bathing? Because mm -hmm. the first idea I had, it was like, oh, to take a bath in the forest, <laughs> then maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be great to combine everything. So to walk in the forest and to take a bath in some small lake, yeah. it is the best. Yeah, then you would uh, join the benefits of hydrotherapy <laughs> and forest. Uh, forest bathing, it's a term like Shinrin Yoku, it uh, um, can be translated as or forest medicine, or sometimes it is called uh, forest bathing. It's a name for some complementary technique which um, promotes um, sojourns in forest. So this idea suggests that uh, sojourns in forest improve health, 
mainly uh, the immune system, so the functioning of immune system, and also the cardiovascular system. So why? Uh, there is one thing which is uh, quite interesting. It concerns the um, volatile organic compounds. So these are the etheric oils. We feel mostly when we walk in the coniferous forests. And uh, this is the nice scent we know from the pine forest. And uh, they are very rich in terpenes. And these terpenes, they have strong anti-inflammatory, immunomodulatory and anti-infectious uh, effect. So that's why it is very healthy for the airways. Another effect is the photosynthesizing function of the trees, which product oxygen and they eliminate the air pollution. So this is this part which concerns uh, the immunity system. There was one study which uh, focused on the function of the immunity system and realized that after three days in the forest, the people, uh, they proved uh, enhanced uh, level of the NK cells, natural kill cells, uh, which are very important for the uh, immunity protection against uh, infectious diseases. So this uh, number of these uh, cells was increased by 50%, which is quite in, important. In three days. Yeah, in three days. Yeah. And another effect, which uh, so then uh, uh, there was another study which observed the benefit on the cardiovascular health. And what was um, agreed by different medical studies, so regular uh, sojourn in forest um, uh, is very beneficial for the uh, for the patients in risk of cardiovascular diseases because it uh, lowers blood pressure, lowers heart rate, and uh, uh, and also has very positive effects on the mood, so the state of serenity, it decreases depression, etc. There can be another explanation that uh, the trees as well as human beings, they uh, are also like living forms and all the living forms, they have their uh, DNA and they emanate a kind of electromagnetic uh, field and electrochemical reactions. We have it in common so we should be influenced, functioning of our body should be influenced also by these electromagnetic fields of the trees. So this is how we can explain uh, this effect on, on mood and cardiovascular uh, conditions. Uh, right. Um, so that's why I, with the forest, I mm -hmm. understand why you say that um, Half day in the forest, uh, half war is gone, right? Yeah. So I... Yeah. Half day in the forest, half war is gone. Yeah, it works perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you know it's very good to think it about because forests they cover, I think around one uh, third of the planet surface, and it's uh, mostly available for uh, all of us in Europe or or the the northern hemisphere. So we have. To know it about that it can uh, contribute also in our good health condition just to walk in, in a forest. Um, so continuing with the nature, mm -hmm. um, about uh, talking about nature um, uh, natural elements, there is um, mention uh, to water mm -hmm. and to, for example, swimming. Uh, in the sea or in another in, another, uh, in natural waters in general no mm -hmm. and i also know that's like very powerful to go mm -hmm. and swim in in, in 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 the sea for example but um how uh, what do you mean when you say there is a salutary effect uh, mm -hmm. when... yeah um yeah this is another tool beneficial for health which we can enjoy daily if we have this opportunity uh, to swim in the sea or in some natural spring waters. So concerning the seawater, this is what is interesting that the composition of the sea minerals is very similar to the composition of minerals in our blood. 
just the concentration of the mineral of the salts is three times um, higher in the sea. Uh, so first of all, this is this like uh, richness in minerals, which is very beneficial for the skin, also for the respiratory um, uh, tract, so so airways. So if we inhale the mist, the sea mist is very salutary uh, for, uh, to prevent the diseases or infection of our uh, respiratory way. Um, then another thing is that uh, the element of water uh, has uh, like a part of this mineral composition or the movement in the water is very healthy because uh, you know we don't deal with the uh, heaviness of gravity so you might know that there are many exercises uh, like uh, many spa which uh, promote the movement uh, like treatment of the joint diseases uh, moving in the water and another aspect we also like to promote within Mehana is hardening, cold water swimming. There was one uh, uh, German priest living in the 19th century. His name was Sebastian Kneipp, who promoted a lot this hydrotherapy. And what is meant mostly by this Kneipp therapy is uh, uh, are the alternate effusions in cold and hot water. So uh, alternate effusions of the extremities either of my arms or of my uh, legs. So why? Because our vessels, they react to the temperature. In cold temperature, the vessels contract. In hot temperature, relent. And when you alternate this temperature within hydrotherapy, you make exercise your vessels, which is very healthy because what, what happens? And when you improve the circulation, mainly in the musculoskeletal system, you uh, encourage the oxygenation, perfusion, bringing the nutrients to some parts of the body and um, uh, washing away all the waste. So that's why it is so health, health, uh, health, um, healthy to uh, expose yourself also to this uh, alternate temperatures. And another aspect which is very beneficial of hardening is um, you can also reinforce your immunity. Uh, there were also many studies uh, which supported this idea. For example, uh, one study uh, um, uh, describes the effect on the prevention of uh, infectious diseases and claims that uh, when the children uh, underwent regularly hardening, so they uh, swam or bath in cold water just for a short while, uh, after six weeks or so, um, their incidence of respiratory infections decreased by 40 percent. So it's great. This is the effect for the immunity system and another effect also for stress releasing. Because if you remain for a really long time in stress, then you get exhausted. And when you get in the cold water, you also reveal like stress reaction. Your heart beats faster, your blood pressure um, raises. But when you get out, you switch into the uh, relaxed condition. And uh, it is very good, it's the same as uh, if you train your muscle, you know. So more you expose you to this like stress pattern, but then you switch into the uh, uh, relaxedness, it uh, reinforces your ability to react and to deal with these stress situations. Yeah, yeah. I remember last time we talked, uh, mm -hmm. I asked you about uh, this hardening sometimes going against the family culture of... Uh, <laughs> getting uh, wet with cold water, but uh, I remember uh, you mentioned this, it is uh, a lot also on us, right? To to see if if, if I'm getting sick or mm -hmm. something, or if I take long time mm -hmm. in, the, in the cold water. I yeah. know, it is... You mean, of course, you have to use it in a wise way and consciously. It's the same as if you are sick, you have, uh, for example, you sprain your ankle, 
So it is not the moment to exercise and uh, to jump, you know, you have to take your time to recover. It's the same for hardening. So it's this uh, beneficial effect uh, you implement just in the moment when your body is um, enough, ready and strong to undergo it. So in the state of uh, when your immunity is weakened or you are compromised in some way, for example, when you suffer from heart disease. So it is not wise to jump in the, the, the cold water. So, but there is always a way to do it gradually in some smart and wise way. And also always there is a sense to uh, undergo hardening when uh, you are in good health condition. And then you can gain this uh, beneficial effect for your health. All right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, because, okay, everybody, we, we depend a lot of um, digital connectivity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it has good things and mm -hmm. bad things. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, in relation to our health, mm -hmm. um, what will be um, your advice in the use of, of, of uh, the excessive use of technology, let's say? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, so we have to go along, like digital technology is here, so it makes part of our lives, but I think we have to be uh, always conscious that we have this freedom. Sometimes I think we claim we are much more pressed to uh, use it as is the reality. So we always have the freedom to choose how much we will use it or not, how much we'll be dependent or not. You know, we have the choice for the dependent, for the addiction. So of course, this what is harmful, I mean, is the addiction. Whatever addiction is is uh, uh, harmful, like addiction for alcohol, addiction for for video games or whatever. So, uh, and we have this freedom to to decide. And uh, so, so you know, uh, me personally, I think I found some kind of way which suits uh, to me. I wouldn't judge it as a bad thing at all because of. Of course, there are also many positive aspects, but um, we have really again to bring awareness into it and then choose um, how far we agree to become slaves or not. Right. Okay. Awareness mm. is very important. It's true. Um, continuing with uh, in this line, like uh, let's say a uh, person who who is busy the eight, nine hours in their job, no? The mm -hmm. routine starts at 7 a.m., they finish at 5, and after it, uh, there is another project, another job, or, or the kids, and more responsibilities. So a uh, person who ends, and starts the day at 7 and ends the day at uh, 10, 11 in the night, um, what will be, what will be the best for the be the best for starting care about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how to yeah so you mean that uh, okay now you speak about uh, people who are really busy so they not have much time to sacrifice to the self care etc so first of all i think we so nobody should judge this style of life so i understand completely that it's uh, very hard to find time to sacrifice to, to, to self-care and uh, health lifestyle. But I'm pretty sure that you can implement some, some rules or some principles of healthy lifestyle even within such a busy day. So for example, you wake up 10, 15 minutes earlier as usual, and you do some breathing exercise for five minutes, and then another 10 minutes you do some Qigong or yoga movements. The, and already they just this 15 minutes will help you to tune in some kind of like like harmonize your, your body uh, your physical aspects but also your state of mind then maybe you are used to take shower in the morning but you can take cold shower and you implement this aspect of hardening and then uh, you prepare your breakfast and you go to take some public transport for work, 
that you can also consider to walk a little bit more, to move, to have some, some, some healthy uh, exercise. So you just get off the bus one station sooner and you walk five minutes longer. So it's just five minutes more uh, or you get to work and you work in the fifth floor. So you don't take a lift, you, you walk the stairs up. So there are small things you can always like implement, insert in your uh, everyday life. And it doesn't cost you any money, any uh, too much effort. Another thing when, uh, of course, it is not that healthy that you sit for eight hours in front of computer. Everybody knows it, but we know that sometimes it, it's necessary. We need it. But uh, even though you can uh, do it in some healthy way, you can readjust every 10 minutes, every 15 minutes. You can just readjust, realign your posture. Uh, just bring awareness into your breathing every 10 minutes. Just say, okay, how I breathe, uh, implement diaphragmatic breathing. Or, okay, maybe do some A exercises like palming. That when you really watch the screen for too long, so every two hours you can cover your um, eyes and do this A exercise. And then uh, um, uh, when you get back at home and you have to do some cooking household, uh, everybody, we need to do this, but also this you can do in some like healthy and positive way that instead, instead of uh, uh, be resistant and maybe complaining of it, you can smile, you can implement some graceful or dense movements into the cleaning, into the cooking, you can sing, you can do it in some, like even, you know, the healthy and joyful posture and movements you can implement in whatever you do. Yeah. And then again, when you get to bed in, in the evening, it's also nice to take maybe 10 minutes before to switch off uh, all the digital devices and just listen to some nice music. And, yeah. yeah, definitely. I <laughs> think, uh, like you say, every uh, one of the important things, I mean, all of them, mm -hmm. but uh, it's important when you are like, let's say, six, eight hours uh, in a row in the computer, like every two hours, have that mm -hmm. time for palming or breathing. This is what we like to promote in Mehana Institute to give the healing tools hand over to the people really uh, this is why our programs are educative so the people who uh, participate in our programs we consider them as partners so they participate in the active way so the goal is to transmit the healing tools which are really easy, you know, the, the people, they don't need to buy something, to buy supplements, to do some really uh, long lasting trainings or whatever. We like to promote that the healing tools are here just now available every day, like forest, like cold water, like uh, how I move, how I sit, how I learn, how I breathe. And this is what we like to teach the people that when they uh, pass our courses, they already have in their hands something they can work with uh, in their daily yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. why I guess uh, the quote like uh, you cannot uh, stop the waves, mm -hmm. but you can learn to surf, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit in that sense. That yes, these tools help you to. Yeah, I like this quote. You can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. This is go with the flow you know that uh, whenever you resist too much because of course there will be always so many things you can't influence in your life so uh, you should go along <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. this perfect way to um, take care of our health uh, it is learning to listen our own body and mind right mm -hmm. and um, what is the best way to to start? I mean, it, you not to repeat the same mm -hmm. because I understand it, these these tools are are going there. But what what is the 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 best way to start for somebody mm -hmm. who is trying to? Yeah, I think exactly this already. These exercises we were uh, speaking about they can help a lot. 
whatever activity you do and you bring your awareness into the subconscious uh, patterns, it is already where you start to bring the self-perceptiveness self uh, uh, for your body and mind. So, for example, the breathing techniques or the movement techniques when you bring awareness into how, what is the line of the movement, what about your balance, uh, what about your um, proprioception, so where the body is placed in the space. So all these small techniques, what they do, they, it's as if you put light in some dark room, you are not aware of, you have some room, it's our subconsciousness, and you know it is some, there is something, but you don't really know what happens there. And you uh, are aware that maybe there are also some pathological uh, things which happen there. So, but once you open the door, you switch on the light, you can clean it up. And this opening of the door and switching on of the light, this is exactly, these are these techniques what I speak about, like the breathing techniques, the movement techniques, and also whatever creativity, whatever like mindful uh, mindfulness. So concretely, so how you can start it about. Um, you can learn some movement techniques from yoga, from Qigong, which is what we promote mostly. We also uh, uh, teach the, uh, some physiotherapeutic principles, and this is always the same. The people, they uh, try to be aware, so how, what is the alignment of the body? So what are the breathing patterns? Another tool are the breathing exercises. So this is how you can start. And uh, so we, we try all, uh, to teach the, the people these basic tools, and then it's up to them how far they implement it in their daily life. And what will be the biggest struggle for people who, who, who is trying to, to achieve this uh, healthy living? Whatever you like to implement, whatever you like to adopt, so the biggest obstacle is usually lack of consistency and lack of kind of discipline. So for me, it counts for whatever <laughs> uh, new uh, approach you like to, to adopt. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, from my point of view, uh, consistency, discipline. You should do, you know, small steps, small particular steps not try to uh, change too many things at one moment because uh, this is hard. So as I told you, start with five minutes of this, five minutes of that, but do it consistently every day. And when you fail in some way, don't worry, don't judge it, just get back and repeat. And by the small steps, you uh, then have more chance to apply these new things into your daily life. Yeah, yeah I think that's mm -hmm. a very good advice. Um, <laughs> very simple, but yeah. common sense, but sometimes you need somebody. To and also always them. keep, you know, I think what is uh, also essential from my point of view, keep always like the positive um, state of mind. Like, uh, of course, sometimes maybe you are too lazy, you don't want to do this or, but if you judge yourself, if you put yourself immediately like uh, uh, in the state of guilt, then uh, this will never help you. So just, okay, uh, take it how it is. Uh, don't judge yourself too much. Take it in the positive way and try again. Yeah. <laughs> um, Christina, um, will you, for example, uh, tell me how, how can we identify it? Um, when bad habits in our daily routines are mm -hmm. starting to become critical for our health. Yes, I think that everybody is um, aware what are the bad habits because uh, the recommendation for healthy life come from all sides. So the rules of healthy nutrition, healthy lifestyle, everybody knows it. But we know that sometimes uh, uh, it's uh, not easy to implement it. 
um, I think it's ever again the self perceptiveness, self awareness. You know, once you really l achieve this ability to observe yourself, but also your emotions, your mind. So again, uh, observation of your emotions, observation of your automatic behavior. This is the open door into your subconsciousness. And this is where, when you put light in this uh, subconscious room. And this is the key from my point of view, which helps you to stop this pathological chain to develop. Because we can agree, me as emergency uh, rescue doctor, I have seen the pathological uh, conditions at the very end. Like usually, uh, you know, there is some chain of pathological reactions in the body and at the very end they can lead into the, uh, to the life-threatening situation, emergency situation. Uh, this is what I dealt mostly within all my medical career with. And, you know, uh, within the time I started to think, okay, but do we do as conventional Western medicine enough uh, to stop this pathological chain at the very beginning, I was not sure. So that's why I also decided to focus now on this uh, uh, direction of medicine, the complementary medicine, because I think that the people, because they are not aware, they are not self-perceptive, they, they don't really, they are completely ignorant to this uh, subconscious patterns, which can consequently lead to some life-threatening situation. And if we uh, learn to bring more awareness in, uh, uh, for our instincts and kind of inner voice, then we um, discover these pathological um, patterns before they get, get so severe that they are expressed uh, like a life-threatening situation. Do you have some rules uh, when, when it's about this? Uh or eating or nutrition in, in the seminar? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, you know, now I think we are overwhelmed uh, by the recommendation for, for nutrition and food. And uh, there are millions of them. And I think in general, everybody knows what is healthy foods. Like the rules is clear, like uh, uh, vegetable-based, uh, fresh, uh, uh, not like uh, contaminated <laughs> so we know it uh, and then there are so so many different recommendations and diets i'm very reluctant you know to uh, adopt uh, these recommendations i think that it is then we come back to for me the principal rule is again the self-awareness and self-perceptiveness because um, when you are really self-perceptive you would never eat the things which would harm you. And on the other hand, uh, you know, for example, sometimes it's told that it's not healthy to eat uh, meat and dairy products, etc. Yes, but we have to take into consideration that there are some nations in the world, they have no option uh, than eat meat and dairy products. And despite this fact, the people, they can live very healthy till 96 years or 100. And uh, so th this is for me an example that finally I would tell that everything depends mostly on the state of mind, you know. Uh, just uh, regarding the world, so in different parts of the world we have different sources and different also uh, options for the nutrition. And uh, so uh, this is uh, an explanation for for me that there is no one specific diet which is the best. And also within our lives, I am pretty sure that we, all of us, we have periods when we need something more than in other periods. Me, myself, when I was 20, I remember that I really felt that I need to eat meat and it made me really uh, strong and healthy. Now, I don't eat any meat uh, almost anymore and I feel healthy too. And um, so to conclude this topic, I would tell that, um, you know, when you worry too much, when you are too much concerned and too much anxious 
about the nutrition, it would harm you much more than to eat one McDonald's hamburger or a sausage uh, when you are in a, a cheerful state of mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I know, I know, it is, it is true. No, you, you mentioned first, like, uh, if I go to camp with friends and we are having a uh, fire, and then, yeah, yeah like, uh, you roast some sausages, you know, um, and then. Uh, I think it's it's really important because everything is complex. You know, when you ingest food, you don't ingest just the chemical substances, but you ingest also the context. And when you ingest whatever the uh, most healthy food in context of some weariness and anxious state of mind or some angriness, then it would not really nourish you in a good way. Uh, on the other hand, if you are, uh, for example, when you travel, and uh, for example you don't prefer to eat meat because you think it's not healthy uh, and but you travel in some area uh, where the people the indigenous people they eat meat and they invite you they make a fire and they, they like to host you in, in the very best intention yeah. and just imagine when you no 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 i don't eat it then you know the ambience is not good but okay go with the flow yeah. so uh, and this is also the, the, always the go with the flow then then, okay, so you make an exception, you eat something with them, but you see they are happy, you are happy, everybody is happy, so I'm pretty sure it would never harm you, your body. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I, I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just mentioned that other quote about like food is like, uh, one apple a day keeps the doctor away, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> if you like it, yeah. <laughs> if you are not allergic to, <laughs> yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. I think we are almost coming to the end. And mm -hmm. there is something very important mm -hmm. um, that um, is is in 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 the website of Mekana. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the herbarium. Mm -hmm. uh, how how have you managed to collect such amount of mm -hmm. information about herbs that are uh, about plants that can be using to improve? Mm -hmm. You mean herbarium? Yes, uh, this is my passion, my uh, my uh, lifelong passion. Um, so first of all, you know, I grew up partly in a, a mountain village in in Bohemia, and I spent most of my time in the nature. This is what I do till now. So for me, it was already since childhood very natural, you know, to discover the herbs, the plants. And then also my grandmother and my father, they, they taught me some things about also how we can use the plants for cooking, but also for making some, some teas or some, some medicine. And, uh, you know, when I uh, um, started to practice medicine as a doctor, I wanted to um, um, learn more about the medicinal properties of the plants so i had also the chance to study at the um, school for herbal medicine in lyon france so i got deeper into the like scientific knowledge about the herbal medicine and we have uh, to think about that also the other medicinal tradition uh, we were speaking about each of them always and also our medicinal tradition like the hippocratic galenic uh, medicine tradition it, uh, the, med, the herbal medicine always made an important part of whatever uh, medicinal branch. So uh, this is uh, uh, why I think it's very important to, to know it about. And we implement it within the Mehana Institute because I think that, uh, you know, it's also another very helpful tool for the people for when they are really they like to go in the nature that they know that also within the nature they can find many things so within this mehana herbarium i am about to create and i am about also to cooperate with other doctors which are now uh, in uh, involved within mehana project so we create uh, papers uh, about uh, different um, medicinal plants and we like to uh, explain to the people, so uh, describe the plant, explain what is it good for, like for the health, how precisely you can use it, so what you can make 
from this plane, how you can, in which way you can use it. And also there is always one part for those one which are more interested in the scientific background, so mostly doctors. So I put some references to the scientific articles and studies which describe the scientific background of the effects of the herbs. So this is Mehana Herbarium. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I remember it is in the newsletter. Yes. Uh, there is uh, every month there is um, something to watch, mm -hmm. something to listen, like music. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the topic of the day and the herbarium, right? There yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Great, great, yeah. great. Uh, <laughs> well, um, I think we are uh, in our last uh, question, mm -hmm. uh, which is um, according to your medical practice, mm -hmm. the values and Hannah, uh, what are the three pillars of health? What, what are these three pillars of health? Yeah, uh, so I would tell that the three pillars of the, the most important pillar is self-perceptiveness. Once we become uh, self-perceptive to our bodies or to our minds, then we would be led by this inner wisdom, what is good for our health or not. So it, we should, try to withdraw from the external recommendation, external stimuli, but uh, op we should learn more to listen to our inner wisdom of our bodies. Because, you know, when you watch the animals, you see that the animals, uh, they have maybe more um, developed this inner instinct wisdom, which suggests them what to do in kind of some disease. So this is uh, the first pillar self-perceptiveness. The second one is humor. Because, uh, you know, humor already triggers all the positive states of mind. And uh, I think that sometimes when we are too much concerned about health and all these recommendations, uh, we shouldn't take it too much seriously, you know, <laughs> because it would be a pity to forget to live the life when we are too much worried about death, mm -hmm. about health. Okay, everybody will die one day. So it's a pity to spend the life to worry about uh, how to prevent that <laughs> and to forget to live. So, so bring humor in whatever, in some, you know, lightness or detachment, whatever you do, and uh, healthcare included. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the third pillar for me is um, don't be afraid to live your life. <laughs> well, I mm -hmm. definitely understand, uh, and after um, this talk we have, um, understand that definitely uh, a lot it depends of uh, listening to myself, to mm -hmm. my mind, to my own body, and that is very important. It's something is that is there, mm -hmm. but when you talk about it, it kind of uh, settles more on you, mm -hmm. and. The second step, um, it was uh, okay. I am. What if I'm in home and I have some stress, and being in home doesn't help me to really help. Uh, doesn't help me to really uh, listen to myself. And we were talking about the importance of nature, and mm -hmm. the river is closed, or the beach is closed, the forest is closed, and some hill is closed. And so go to go that place and and to have some time for 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 this uh, uh, quiet moment, mm -hmm. right? So I have two points in there, mm -hmm. and I think the other is enjoy life, right? This life, yeah, I'm... yeah. And with humor, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you don't mind, just before cutting, mm -hmm. uh, there is that one question I didn't ask, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, it is about what if uh, you are really sick or ill about mm -hmm. something, and you go to the doctor, and then you decide uh, to go against um, doctor or family suggestions about using conventional medicine to, to heal. Mm -hmm. you know, we're talking about maybe critical uh, conditions, uh, critical diseases. But what if I decide, um, this person decide to go for for alternative um, options, alternative medicine, would you think it's uh, irresponsible from this person 
to try different uh, from the recommendation? Yeah, it uh, depends. You know, from my point of view, I don't see uh, any contradiction like alternative versus conventional. No. That's why, you know, uh, we promote complementary medicine. Complementary medicine, uh, there is no contradiction. It just, you know, it makes kind of bridge. It, uh, we try to make a horizontal line which shows that, you know, uh, it's interrelated. We can complement each other. Conventional medicine can be co uh, complemented by these so-called alternative methods. And uh, so uh, from my point of view, I think it's now it is the time, you know, uh, we have to enjoy this uh, exceptional opportunity we have in these days to learn about other cultures, learn about other traditions and uh, not see the contradiction and see what each of them can offer and to uh, adjust uh, all these approaches also to individuals and also to their cultural roots sometimes it can be also very hard to implement just the traditional uh, chinese healing methods because there are so many different cultural aspects so um, as you ask whether it's responsible to decide for different medical approach each patient have his or her freedom to decide for him or herself. And uh, even within conventional medicine, we always like offer this opportunity to, to the patient to decide for him or herself whether they like to undergo this recommended treatment or not. Uh, so this is the principle of it should be implemented always in the interaction. Uh, between doctor and patient, so the doctor should uh, inform the patient as uh, in the best as he or she can, and the patient should have this opportunity to decide for him herself. And then there is another question: responsibility, maybe uh, to for the family of the person. So I can imagine that you, maybe you meant with your question: so what to do if there are some recommendations, for, for example, for the cancer? chemotherapy operation and the patient refuses this and the family members are not happy with this then you know uh, I think th it happens time to time and it's really up to consider also this kind of responsibility to the family you know and of course everybody should have this freedom to decide about his or her own health I understand well <clears throat> You know, I think uh, we are basically finishing. I don't know if mm -hmm. you want to add uh, something. Or... I'm happy uh, like this. Thank you so much for for you. uh, for your interview and uh, thank you. Maybe we can meet uh, again in some time. And yeah, to, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Maybe make yeah. different. Uh, there are topics that are yeah. for longer, right? Yeah. Thank you, Isra. Thank you. Thank you.